Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Today I want to talk to you about crypto mats in Redshift and Cinema 4D. Now, if you haven't used crypto mats before, I cannot recommend them highly enough. They've completely changed the way that I work in Cinema 4D. Um, I used to use object buffers to make all the mats, and it takes a long time to go into each of your objects, right click, add a tag, make sure each one has the right number, go into your render settings, make sure you have the right passes, and then in After Effects it even takes a lot more work with all those different render layers. So Crypto Mats basically takes that whole workflow and it makes it somewhat obsolete. So instead of doing all that, all we have to do is add a couple of clicks, and I'll show you how to do that. So here's our scene, and we have two shader balls. This studio is from our Redshift Lighting Essentials, if you're interested. And each shader ball has only three different pieces of geometry. So we have this piece right here, we have these little circle parts, and then we have our rings. So that's six pieces of geometry, and then the floor and the background. And as for materials, we have five different materials. So that's the basic setup of this scene. So let's go to Redshift, and let's go to our AOV Manager. And this is basically just all of the different render passes that you can add. And CryptoMat is one of these options. So let's click and drag and drop it over here. And under CryptoMat, there's not a lot of options that we need to go over. You can pretty much leave everything as it is. And under ID type, if we twirl that down, we have four different options. Now, the bottom one, I'm not going to get into, it gets a little bit into Espresso. The object ID one gets to be a little bit too manual for me. There's a lot of work that you have to do. If you use the object ID, you have to go into your object, right click, go to Redshift Tags, add a Redshift object tag, go into that tag under object ID, click overwrite, and then give it a number. And you have to do that with all the different elements that you want a buffer for. So if you want to get a little bit more manual, you can do that. But what I really like about CryptoMat is just how quick it is and we're going to use the top two for this. So the top one is object name, and this is going to render out anything that has mesh. So anything that is a individual kind of a polygonal piece, it's going to render out an object buffer for that. And then the second one is material name, and that's going to render out, in this case, five different buffers. And each of those buffers will have whatever geometry has that material on it. So that's the difference between these two. And if you want to render both of these out, you can always add two different crypto mats. So we'll drag and drop another one. And in the second one, we'll change that to material name. So you'll notice that we didn't really do a whole lot of work here. We didn't add any tags to anything in our scene. We literally just added crypto mat and change the ID type to one of the top two. And that's it. And then all you have to do is hit render. So you're gonna see what an incredible uh, time saver this is. So we'll hit render and we'll jump over into After Effects. All right, so here in After Effects, we have our main render and then we have our two different crypto mats. So let's drag this one in here on top. And here's where some people get a little bit confused because it says a .exr. So a lot of people think that means you need to add extractor, which you would normally use for a .exr. But this is not going to work. You need a different plugin for crypto mats. And this plugin that you're going to use is a free one, and it's by the same company that uh, makes Extractor. So I'll add a link below, but it's this plugin right here, which is called Pro EXR. And uh, it has this review here. Going back to using After Effects and Photoshop without Pro EXR is completely unthinkable. And I agree with this statement. So this is a free plugin. It has CryptoMat support. Just download that and install that for After Effects and then restart After Effects. And now if we type in CryptoMat, you can see that we have our little plugin here and we'll drag and drop it. And right away, we're gonna see what's going on here. So if you're not sure what layer this is, you can click this gray area right here and under layer, it'll say crypto mesh. And crypto mesh means that this is not the material one, but it's the, uh, the object one. So every object in your scene has its own mat. So to select these, you have to make sure that your crypto mat plugin is uh, highlighted here. If it's not highlighted, you won't be able to click anything. So if you highlight crypto mat and then click one of these colors, it's going to instantly make a mat for you. So if you click through here, you can see that it's uh, just adding a mat for any of these objects that you click. So you can change the output from colors to mat only, and there's your mat. So now we can take our crypto main render, we can change that to a Luma mat, and now we have that piece isolated. So if we duplicate that main render and we put it below here, now what we can do on this piece is we can play around with the levels or the hue and saturation or whatever we want because it's isolated. So if we did a hue saturation adjustment, 
can add colorize and we can change the hue of this. Now the great thing about this is if we want to do this same correction to other objects, normally what we'd have to do is find our object buffer and duplicate this and add another buffer on top. It gets to be pretty complicated, but what we can do instead, now that we're using CryptoMat, just click on that CryptoMat and what you can do is hold down shift and that means that if you click, it'll add it to its selection. So if we click here with holding shift, we just click around, we can start adding things to our selection really easily. And you can see just how powerful this is. And if we want to subtract them, all you have to do is hold down control and you'll get a little scissor here and you can start subtracting them if you click. So it's pretty nuts how fast this is to add buffers in Redshift and then also to play around with them when you're compositing. And then if we want to go to our other Cryptomat scene, we can throw that on top here and we'll add Cryptomat to it. And now you can see that Everything in your scene that had that one specific material now has a mat. So that's just another way to do it. So that'll give you even more flexibility if say there's a bunch of stuff with a glass material in your scene, you could render out this pass and just click on one of those glass pieces and everything in your scene that has glass will be highlighted. I kind of hate to use the word game changer. It's such an aggressive term, but this is one of those things that will change how you approach your workflow. Hope you guys found that useful and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.